And our final plenary speaker is Tara Shine. Tara is an environmental specialist uh, who spent a lot of time with crocodiles in the past and large predatory reptiles as well. Uh, <coughs> and um, <coughs> she, she has been working on a lot of issues with us over quite a number of years. And she, you know her as well as a presenter on TV, most recently, I think, of a wild Irish year. So you want to talk about new horizons and new perspectives. Tara Shine. Afternoon. I wasn't trying to intimidate you. I just know that every second counts at this point in time. So I was like getting efficiently onto the stage. So uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, half four, second day of the conference. You're all wilting. So um, I think what I can do now is try and recap on some of the great sentiments that came through in the last few days. Um, I noticed in preparing this that a lot of people have picked up on similar things as I listened this morning and yesterday. Um, so when was the last time you felt truly connected to nature? How did it make you feel? So I was lucky, a really lucky duck, and I spent January in Antarctica on a global leadership program for women in science. And I had a childhood dream come true, which was to hang out with humpback whales. How did it make me feel? awestruck, wonderstruck. It made me happy and sad all wrapped into one. I am so angry that there could be a threat to these amazing people and to the beautiful wilderness of Antarctica, yet I just come away from it more determined than ever that we are going to make sure that our children and our children's children get to hang out with humpback whales as well. But I can't go to Antarctica every day to get inspired, so I have to find somewhere closer to home. And this is Sandy Cove Island, just outside Kinsale, where I live. And how I normally connect with nature is I stick my head into the Atlantic Ocean and swim around this island. And that's what does it for me. It's complete immersion. It is complete stress relief. It is me in the big sea, recognizing and remembering that the ocean and nature are bigger than I am. So take four seconds. Turn to the person beside you and tell them, where is your place? Where is your place you feel connected? I'm watching you. Tell them. See, you love it. You love thinking about your favorite place. All right, come back, come back, come back. It's not just... It's, I knew there was a risk with that. It's not, just, um, it's not just places that make us feel connected to nature. It's also people. And this is something that's really I'm very passionate about, is that we as people, we're part of nature. We're, we're nature's best hope. Um, we, we are where, where, it's, where it lands in many cases. We just need to know our place a little bit. The, the woman in the older photograph over here is my granny. If she was alive, she'd be 96 today. And my granny taught me to appreciate the small wonders of nature. She told me how to find the violets in the crack of the wall. She told me how to find the perfect shell on the beach and to appreciate it for what it was. To wait the extra day for the sun-ripened tomato before you eat it so you taste every single bit of its juicy sweetness. And she passed that love on to me. Now, the poor corn crakes and the curlews have been hauled out over the coals a lot over the last few days um, as, an, as an emblem of what we're losing. But I do know that when my granny grew up in Westmeath, she heard corn crakes and curlews regularly. I have to say that I haven't heard many corn crakes in my life. I haven't been that lucky. But when this 11-year-old girl called Lauren, who's my daughter, was a baby, the curlew was my sound. So when I was awake in the middle of the night feeding, feeding Lauren, that was the sound I heard, the curlews calling across the estuary where I lived. And I want her to grow up with that sound. I don't want her to miss out on that call as I missed out, I think, on the corn crakes call. So don't answer this one because you'll talk too much. But think about it. Who makes you feel connected to nature? Mull that over. This next one I, is for the people who like facts. But luckily, Inger went into all these facts earlier, and as have other people, on how a connection to nature is not something touchy-feely, fuzzy, it's not just emotive, although the emotions are really important. It actually makes us less stressed, less depressed, more healthy. It makes us more connected to the natural world that we live in. It makes us care more. Yet the way that we're designing our school curriculums, the way we're living our lives, the way we're becoming so busy and so focused on technology, we're being pushed and pushed constantly further away from nature. So what are we going to do about it? I think there's a whole heap of things we can do about it. We can make our cities wild again. We can put those green and blue spaces back into our cities. This dipper lives under a bridge, 
and nests and breeds under a bridge between a dual carriageway and a big massive shopping centre in Blackpool in County Cork. I had walked over that bridge any number of times and I had never seen this dipper. It was only when we were making the programme Wild Cities were crossing the line that I got to meet this dipper and see that it was thriving right there in the middle of the city and producing fabulous chicks and finding enough food and invertebrates within that stream to feed their chicks. So with more and more of our population living in urban centres, certainly we have to actively bring the, the biodiversity into the cities, but also get out there and recognise that it's there. We've talked a lot in the last week and in the last two days about what we can do within our gardens. So if we care about the dramatic decline in insect populations, we have to do really simple things. Let a bit of the garden go wild, mow the lawn less. I'm all for it. Uh, and then get out there, get out there with the eyes of a child and see all these small and wonderful things that are living in your garden. You're still allowed to hate slugs, though. That's OK. And our farms. I think I've heard so many inspirational stories in the last two days around what inspired um, farmers are doing to just let a little bit of their farm go wild. This curlew chick is able to be alive today because a farmer left the bottom of a field, let the grass grow long, and then the curlew could come and nest. And this chick was able to... To, to have a good, a good future. It's small things, small things, but they make a huge difference. On our coasts, I, I, although I'm from Kilkenny, I love the sea, and uh, our coasts are some of our most special places and a place where we definitely connect um, really strongly. So next time you go for a walk on the coast, bring a bag with you, do your two minute beach clean, and let's keep trying to tidy up this constant flow of plastic litter that is coming to our beaches. Small things we can do, but we can, we can all play our part. I think this is really important because basically our actions here and the way that we live the wildlife um, has impacts beyond our boundaries. These are Adelie penguins on Paulet Island in, a, in Antarctica and their numbers are in sharp decline because West Antarctica is the fastest warming place on the planet and because they rely on krill to eat and krill is associated with sea ice and we have less sea ice so we have less krill, so we have less Adelie penguins. Yet there are no, very few sources of emissions on the continent of Antarctica. The, the cause of climate change is not that continent. The cause of climate change is us and how we live here, particularly in the developed world. So our actions and our inactions have this impact way, way beyond our boundaries to thousands and thousands of kilometers away in Antarctica. So what does the future look like for me? The future looks like wild children, children that grow up in school and in their pre-time and in their playtime and their time with their families, with time in the great outdoors, that's my son Nathan, um, time in the great outdoors, time to connect to nature so they grow up not disconnected. And that means that we as the adults need to give that example, we need to make sure that we're living what we preach, same as the mobile phones and the tablets, that we're enjoying and living in the outdoors. Because I passionately believe this is the only way we'll change the conversation in Ireland, so that we start to change and create the political will that we need to do all the things that we've talked about in the last two days. If we have conversations about this at our kitchen tables, at our school gates, then we will change what people vote for and we will change what happens around our biodiversity in Ireland. So Anna yesterday gave us some lovely quotes from Rachel Carson and I chose one too. The human race is challenged more than ever before to demonstrate our mastery, not over nature but of ourselves. This is what it all comes down to. This is the solution for climate change and biodiversity. And if we do nothing else, we can just enjoy the small things, as my granny taught me, and make a little space for nature. I can't tell you the joy I got watching this blue tit jump in and out of this box um, outside my kitchen window. And I think many of us have things like that that keep us going on a stressful day. Thank you.